Hello everyone, Mike Rempel from Excel Bytes with today's Excel blog post. I recently received a request to create a formula that would indicate an error when using dynamic data validation and you have a list of categories and items within that category. If there's a mismatch between those, we need a message to appear to the user that there's an error and the item and category don't match. So we've created that formula using four different functions. So let's see how we can accomplish this in Excel. So here's our scenario. I have a drop-down list which has four different items in it, candy, fruit, miscellaneous, and other. And to create that, if we go to data, data validation, you can see I just set it up where I have equal categories for my list because I've named this group here categories. So that's how I got the list there. And then in this data validation in I3, if we look at that, I choose list and then I use the indirect function to reference cell A3 and that will give me the dynamic list that will appear depending on the category. So you can see that miscellaneous is chosen. It gives me towels, tissues, rags, and buckets. But if I change this to candy, I now have chocolate, suckers, taffy, and gum, and I can choose one of those. But notice when an item is chosen for that category and I change the category, even though the list shows only the appropriate choices here, until I choose one, I actually have a mismatch here because gum does not appear in the category fruit. So we've created this formula here to tell the user you need to change your item so it is an appropriate one for the category. Once I make that change, now I have OK. So we're using four different functions within this formula to accomplish this. The four functions are the if function. Now the if function has a logical test, the value of true and the value of false. And what we're doing with the if function is if the count of the item that we have, in this case apples, in the category, in this case fruit, is greater than zero, then give me an OK. If it's not, then give me change item. So then we have to use the count if function to calculate that logical test. Count if has a range and then the criteria. So what's that formula doing is it counts the number of times the item, in this case apples, appears in the range, in this case fruit, of that category. So as long as it's greater than zero, which it should just be one, it'll give me an OK. If it's not, then it'll give me change item. The trick with the count if function is determining the appropriate range. And we're using the offset and match functions to do that. Offset starts with a reference. And then you determine how many rows down and how many columns over you go. And then what's the height? in the number of rows and what's the width in the number of columns. And this defines that range of the values that we want to do the lookup for our count if function. The match function uses a lookup value, a lookup array, and then a match type. And that's determining the column of the values we want to use for the category. So let's walk through our formula. I'm going to go ahead and click on cell J3. And let's go through our formula for the example that we have here of fruit and the item of apple, which gives me an OK. And let's see exactly what happens with our formula. And we're going to do that by going to the Formula tab and going through Evaluate Formula. So here's the scenario. The first thing that Excel wants to do is determine in the match function what is in cell H3. Right now it says fruit, so if I hit evaluate, it tells me fruit. So now I'm going to match fruit in B2 to F2, because that's the range across of the headings here, and I want an exact match. So I'll say evaluate, and it tells me that it is column 3. So if we look at fruit in this range, I have categories, candy, fruit. That's in column 3. So now we're going to move to the offset function. Now the offset function starts with a reference. How many rows down I go? 
how many columns over I go, and then how tall do I want my range to be for my offset, and how wide do I want it to be. So I start out with cell A2. I use that as my anchor point. In this case, I want to go down one row, so I move down from A2 to A3. I want to go across three columns, which was determined by my match function. So I start with A2, I go one, two, three, that's the column where there's fruit. I want it to be four rows high because I want it to include apples, peaches, oranges, and pears. And I want it to be one column wide because I just want to look in the fruit column. So I have an offset starting with A2, going down one row, over three columns, I want it four rows high, one column wide. So if I hit evaluate, it gives me the range of D3 to D6, which is exactly what I want. Apples, peaches, oranges, and pears is D3 to D6. So now I have my range determined for my COUNTIF function. Now I want to determine, okay, what am I looking it up in that range? Well, I'm looking up I3, and if I hit evaluate, that's apples. Mm -hmm. So I want to do a count if how many times does apples appear in this range. I hit evaluate. In this case, it appears once. So I'm back to my if statement. If one is greater than zero, then give me OK. If it's not, then give me change item. So is one greater than zero? In this case, that's true. Well, in true, I want an OK. If it was false, I'd have change item. So I'll hit evaluate, the answer is OK, and that's why OK appears here. Now let's change one and walk through it again and see on a false scenario. So now notice I have change item here, so let's walk through that. Again, it wants to match H3, which is other. That's correct, so I want to match other in B2 to F2 with an exact match. So in this case, I get 5. It started at A2, and it went 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 over to the other column. So now I need to create the range using the offset function, starting with A2, going down 1, over 5, 4 rows high, 1 column wide. So it should give me F3 to F6. I hit evaluate, and that's exactly what it gives me, F3 to F6. So now, what's in I3 apples? That's correct. So how often does apples appear in F3 to F6? Well, visually, I can see that it's going to be 0. So if I hit evaluate, I get 0. Is 0 greater than 0? If that's true, it'll give me OK. If it's false, I should get change item. I'll hit evaluate. It's false. So when I hit evaluate again, I get change item, and that's what appears here. The only other thing I did was I conditionally formatted that message. So if we go to Home, go to Conditional Formatting, Manage Rules, you can see I have two rules here. If it doesn't equal OK, then format it in bold and red. If it does equal OK, then format it in bold and green. And that's how, so when I change this, you can see how the formatting will change depending on the message that's displayed. And there you have it. I hope you like what you see. If you do like what you see here, please take a minute to share this post on your favorite social network. I can be found on Facebook, Google+, Twitter, LinkedIn, and YouTube. So I hope you enjoy this. If you'd like to see more, please feel free to stop by my website, excel-bytes.com, and I hope you subscribe. So have a great day and happy excelling.